So I like chemistry, and I really like chemistry. Now to prove that to you, here's a photo of the lab that I set up in my room. Now, what can you do with a lab? You can try to bake the perfect muffin, or you can try to use a lab to make the world's best ice cream. But however, just remember the quote: "Chemistry is like cooking; just don't lick your spoon." However, being the boring nerdy self I am, I chose to use this lab for experimentation. Well, not like that, because that's just a science muffin, as you can see. I was looking for those experimentation that involves a lot of chemicals. Of course, there are everyday chemicals, chemicals that you can find in your brain, can find in water, everywhere, in the air you breathe in. But I was specifically looking for these chemicals in fancy laboratory bottles that scream, "Put on your goggles, otherwise we'll eat you alive." <laughs> in order to find these chemicals, I developed the interest or hobby, as you may say, of Collecting chemicals, and I, from there, became an avid chemical collector. And now, this hobby of mine really made me realize how powerful internet shopping really is. Because the other day in biology class, Mr. Shane was talking to us about this endangered species, axolotl. Guess what? Five minutes later, we found it on Taobao. <laughs> now, the other day, when I was browsing online, I found this chemical called. By hydrogen monoxide, and that's what I wa really wanted to talk to you about. So I had no idea what this chemical is about, and I, but it sounds fascinating. I wanted to find out more about it, so I asked our lovely ChatGPT to say something. Now this is a response that ChatGPT gave me. This is a paragraph-long response, so don't stress yourself with memorizing the whole thing. However, these were the phrases that caught my attention: its harmful effects on the environment. And human health, commonly used industrial processes and the coolant in nuclear power plants, severe burns, respiratory distress, death, and eventually toxic chemicals. And I was wondering if this chemical is so dangerous, why isn't it banned? So I decided to ask ChatGPT that question. And similarly, it gave me another paragraph response. So, in all seriousness, I figured out that Chat. Um, after ChatGPT has told me all this information, I did some research, and this is what I figured out, and that's what really struck me. Do you know that there are 320,000 deaths annually just due to dihydrogen monoxide overdose? And how would you feel now about this scary, mysterious chemical, based just based on this information I presented to you? How would you feel if I told you that dihydrogen monoxide is everywhere, impossible to avoid? Now, eventually, how would you feel if you finally figured out that dihydrogen monoxide is just another name for water, or H2O, the thing you drink every day, well, whatever you may call it? Can you imagine a future without water? Well, this might ring a bell to you, or it might not. While this little example presents itself to be a parody, something that's way too absurd to be trusted. Um, it reveals something with greater significance because none of the information or data that we referred to back then was fake. So this makes us wonder: What's the importance of data if it's so misleading? When we think back at it, we realize that water is indeed commonly used in industrial processes and as a nuclear coolant, and it does cause respiratory distress, even death when consumed in high doses. Do you know how many people die of drowning each year? You're right. The number is exactly 320,000. So the information was all flawlessly truthful, but in the meantime, incredibly misleading. So moreover, we also got ChatGPT, our AI language model, to support our argument, and this leads to the issue of biased data, which refers to the type of data that does not provide an accurate representation of what's going on. So. For example, the information about the hydrogen monoxide that we just talked about. In that very instance, I simply select some information to persuade you into thinking a certain way. And some of you might be already wondering what kind of questions I asked ChatGPT in order for it to provide such misleading information. Oh, this was why I asked ChatGPT. So first, I asked ChatGPT to explain the toxic chemical the hydrogen monoxide without using the word water, and that's what exactly what it did. And after that. I asked ChatGPT to write a paragraph about how we should ban this chemical. So the most dangerous part about this is that if I really wanted to trick you into thinking that 
high, that hydrogen monoxide is a scary toxic chemical that should be banned. I will never have shown you that. What I said to ChatGPT in order to make it produce such an aggregated response. So when I was telling you that there are more than 320,000 deaths annually due to dihydrogen monoxide, did you believe me because of the numbers, the sim seemingly rigorous reference to data? Or did you question my intention behind this interpretation of the information? So every piece of data is constructed and collected with a purpose. It's either to prove or disprove a hypothesis, illustrate a trend, or persuade a population to think a certain way. And we must be careful because data can be persuasive. So without a purpose, the data simply loses its value because we're exposed to so many pieces of data every day, from surveys, websites, social medias, and YouTube, even YouTube ads and podcasts. So while we're exposed to so many pieces of data every day, we might also take a while to consider the intention behind all this information because people are easy to persuade and data can be persuasive. So it is already easy to trick people into thinking a certain way with a limited amount of information. So we must consider how much easier would it be with the help of AI like ChatGPT, which has an unlimited access to a database containing an endless array of information. So with that in mind, we can then consider the difference between information and knowledge. So information is simply facts and numbers that are just out there. The knowledge means something bigger. Knowledge is something you acquire, and it cannot be acquired unless you have an understanding of the information. So this very fact makes knowledge wonderfully free because everyone understands and interprets information differently. This means that knowledge should not be limited to any fixed beliefs. That seems right. So we may all think differently, but we may also all think critically. So by failing to question the intention behind a piece of information, we're just obeying to what we're already, we already know without even the slightest attempt of questioning the data and the information. But knowledge de deserves to be questioned because otherwise it wouldn't have progress in the first place. And new ideas, not just scientific ones, would not be discovered unless we have the ability to criticize. So don't let those big numbers overwhelm you. And don't let any big, scary, sciencey ideas overwhelm you. So if we consider this issue in the present, we'll only find the importance of criticizing data and the intention behind a piece of information to be more and more essential. So right now, we're living in an era when an endless amount of information is being created every day. And this is much, much, more, much greater than the um, maximum capacity of information we can take in. So it is critical to keep in mind that data can be persuasive, but at the end of the day, it's just all information anyways. For example, when I talked about the scary, toxic chemical dihydrogen monoxide, my intention could either be reminding you of the importance of criticizing data, of valuing your own thinking, and not just be overwhelmed by these scary scientific ideas and big numbers. Or my intention could just be trick you into developing a very severe dihydrogen monoxide deficiency. And what can you do to help a dihydrogen monoxide deficiency? Drink more water. Stay hydrated, everyone. <laughs>